Hello, and welcome to episode 16 of Sports Betting Conversations. The title of today's episode is Spotlight Sports Group's Bet Tech Ecosystem, Valuable Insights into Global Eye Gaming and Sports Betting. Harry Von Baer, U.S. Managing Director at Spotlight Sports Group, is back with us again, as well as Kevin Twitchell, advisor at Data Art. Welcome back. You're our first repeat guest. We're very excited. This is a big achievement for us. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's been a long time coming, but we finally have somebody who was willing to uh, come back and talk to us. I feel like it's Saturday Night Live where you get the, you the repeat guest host. You know, we'll have to get a jacket for your third time. We'll get a jacket for your third time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so tell us uh, what, what brings you back. So, no, it's, it's great to be back. Firstly, really, we obviously had a great conversation last time. Very interesting, more generally about the role of um, technology and content and data in the sports betting and gaming space. But this time around, there is a reason rather than us just having a, a nice chat about the same old uh, stuff again. Uh, we're, we're publishing or we have published uh, the third version of the bet tech wheel and bet tech report. Um, so I was very keen to come on with you guys and, and discuss it a bit around, you know, the change in the ecosystem and also some of the trends that, that we've seen over the last year. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and, and I believe, uh, interesting story. I think that's how we actually connected with you in the first place, uh, was we, we saw that, you know, amazing, uh, graphic and then, uh, somebody reshared somebody and you know i guess for us kevin it was viral but if it was me, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> our version of viral and and that's yeah. how we got connected i i think we both read it last time we were at one of the sbcs it may have connected there so and here we go again back to back to new jersey so that's good it's good it's uh it's doing its job yeah uh, that, that was great that was, yeah. well I'm, I'm sure we'll come on to it but yeah one of the one of the reasons that we initially thought to create the first one was to do that, to get it in, in people's hands, get them to understand a bit more about the industry, but also get in touch with the, with Spotlight. So um, I'm glad it served its purpose, at least with you guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah for what sure. it's worth. Yeah. So, so digging into uh, the new report, uh, can you talk about how the bad tech ecosystem have, has grown since 2022? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, so we sort of, you know, big growth between 2021 and 2022. Um, but the most recent 22 to 23 version has again grown. So I think we're about 17% growth in the number of companies, um, which is obviously a pretty substantial um, increase. That's partly helped by the um, the addition of a new segment in the data and cloud um, portion of the bet tech wheel. But what we have seen is a number of um, new companies added um, and probably less than were previously removed. And I think what what's interesting about that is it probably shows that there's still a lot of innovation in the space and new companies being set up um, to compete and also companies entering betting and gaming who previously may have focused on other verticals. Uh, but at the same time, with the, the less... Um, or the lower number of removals, it probably speaks to the lack of consolidation that's happened over the last 12 months versus the previous year. So, um, you know, less, less M&A in the space and therefore a, a growing number of companies rather than companies merging together. Mm -hmm. And do you see that M&A activity, uh, you know, possibly picking up I guess go, going forward because you know the market is growing significantly as you mentioned you know there are startups popping up and you know, not all startups are going to become you know fan duels or draft kings or one of the big affiliates or or, or marketing companies uh, how do you see that yeah it, it will inevitably pick up again it's it's really just a question of when there's um questions around the cost of capital um with interest rates higher than it's it's companies with um, strong balance sheets that will be able to hoover up smaller startups. Um, I think it also varies a lot depending on which segment you're in. Um, it, the, the operators, there's been a lot of consolidation over the last decade or so. Um, we haven't really seen much of it in the US space yet, given it's a um, relatively 
immature market if you look you know versus the uk as an example um but I, i'm sure it will come over time but definitely in the in the technology space amongst suppliers um it it it, it will happen uh it's, it's just a question of when but they'll they'll certainly be more over the course of 2023 than i think we saw in the second half of 2022 where things uh, really came to a standstill <laughs> at one point in time certainly if you compare it to the you know the the heights of 2021 and also the start of 2022 yeah um, it makes total sense yeah like once we reach a certain maturity level here in the u.s we'll, we'll see that happening and um, you know we're all, we're already seeing like some operators back out of states because of costs so that's kind of you know could be maybe writing on the wall for even further um pullback but yeah very interesting um and what are you know some of the key findings um in, in the report um so the report touches on a few different areas i think one one of the main um kind of insights is the difference in levels of maturity across the each side of the atlantic that's that's not going to be sort of massive news to anyone and it's certainly not rocket science but i think it's very interesting to look at um the maturity of the european um market and how relatively saturated it has become and the regulation that is um causing issues for a number of operators and, and suppliers in the various more mature European markets and then comparing that to um to a US market that's grown incredibly strongly um but is now facing, you know, what I what I personally think is something of an overcorrection. Uh, you mentioned operators pulling out of the US, um, certainly a lot more cost pressures and, and a focus on profitability there, but it's still hard to believe that it's not going to be you know, a, a massive valuable sports betting and an eye gaming market at a point in time um so i think looking at the looking at the differences between the more mature and less mature markets is, is certainly one interesting um topic that's covered across the report i think a few others um one that that the growth of uh the or number of companies in the bet tech wheel and bet tech report highlights is that there's probably a reversal of the trend that we had seen previously of um lots of operators looking to insource all parts of the the supply chain um be it for, from um customer acquisition engagement retention monetization um a lot of the back-end technology and now um almost a a reversal of that trend given you're seeing um a lot more focus on profitability and, and cost pressures than sometimes uh, it makes sense to outsource some of your kind of non-core competencies. Uh, so that that's an interesting topic, I think, that is certainly picked up in parts of the reports and also has, has been discussed um, with the various industry experts who have helped uh, pull it together um, with us. So then I think that the final interesting a trend and it probably um again speaks to the the growth in the size of the bet tech wheel is just the increasing um breadth of suppliers and providers that you're getting in uh in in the space and in the market in general you know the the, the first version of the report through to the second and, and now through to the third it's amazing how much the wheel has grown in terms of the different segments on it, um, but also the number of companies in it as well. It's such a a diverse, um, growing industry, even when faced with economic pressures. There, there's a lot of new, interesting businesses that are popping up. Yeah, I mean that that's very very interesting with the uh, um, yeah the insourcing you know you know trend going the other way now because uh, us as suppliers in the industry you know we we have uh you know come across uh you know uh our partners um are you know we're just within our network where yeah they, they were doing most of their work in-house but lately we, we have seen a shift towards outsource um you know 
again, it's, it's something that we have expertise in. Uh, but as you said, you know, it makes complete sense of being trying to kind of uh, you know tidy up uh, the bottom line, and especially in you know the current economic climate, at least in the U.S. Um, and that probably makes a lot of sense. Um, that is, that is going the other way. And, you know, you know, we hope that trend will continue, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually good for both of us with your, your whole product line. And then, you know, a company like data art that, that has the expertise in this area. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, I think, you know, it's similar between both of our businesses, the, the role that data and content plays within that as well you know that's that's something that we've always firmly believed is best provided you know independently um certainly on the on the content side of things the independence of it is is a real point of difference and something that you know that drives betting behavior and and um engages betters uh so i think it's 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 interesting that you've gone through this whole cycle from a u.s market perspective of everything needs to be in sourced and you need to be fully vertically integrated um you know operators buying platforms operators buying trading solutions um and now we're we're sort of coming out the other end of it during a an economic downturn and seeing that actually there's large elements that you can outsource and sometimes it's better to really focus on the the kind of core parts of your proposition and and rely on good quality suppliers to to power the rest of it yeah yeah it makes total sense yeah i really enjoyed reading the report and i encourage everyone to to read it we'll provide a link too because i like the way you you visualize data actually in your report and show show the trends from the overall market to latam and then the, the whole area of data and content which is an area obviously we we focus in a lot is we can see this shift on how, like with media companies, how it went from the platform and how sexy the platform was to audience retention, and now where data starts becoming king, you know, data and content start becoming king to how you succeed. So can you talk a little bit about in the report, you know, that whole section on data and content and what you're seeing kind of moving forward? Yeah, and no, I think you've you've summarized it very well. There's the, the different types of data, the way we think about it is the the data that we use to to inform and create content for our end users, whether it's on our own properties, uh, racing posts, picks wise, um, also whether it's on our media partnership properties, and we work with a number of um, publishers, both in the US and internationally to help them to um, better engage and and unlock value in their audiences. Um, and then the, 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 the other component I think is also the customer data and how that's used. And, uh, we, we certainly see in our, our own, um, our B2C properties, it really, you know, the more we understand the customer, the better we can serve them the right content, the right messaging, um, any, even, you know, tailor and, and evolve the products to better suit their needs as well. So um the the different types of data can can create value for us in different ways um but it's it's really yeah how, how you harness it how how you ingest it how you store it how you actually understand the the insight that that the data is driving rather than just you know having a lot of data is um it isn't it's very rarely if ever the answer yeah so so this report uh yeah it obviously takes a lot of work to pull together you know like as you just mentioned all the, all the data points um and also you know the the, the wheel as well <clears throat> which is a amazing you know illustration of what's going on in, in the industry um from, from your perspective uh how does this report play a pivotal role in, in the gaming industry um i think if if i think back few years to when when we came up with the concepts i think there was an interesting conversation amongst a number of us um at spotlight and realized that there this was a, a quite a significant gap in the industry and in the market you know, people knew 
a lot about individual segments, but a lot of that time either existed in people's brains or on their uh, their hard drives. Um, but there wasn't a resource that could be um, that could be used and and was readily available to a whole range of different industry participants. And I think that that last bit was the, the most crucial factor for us that that it is useful for everyone, regardless of if you're uh, an industry observer. Uh, if you're if you're a participant on the operator side, you know, going back to the previous conversation, I need a payments provider, or I need a um, live data solution, or I need um, racing commentaries. We, we've got a resource here that gives you um, readily available at your fingertips on on your on your desktop, or if if you're like me, the uh, the laminated version that you have sitting on your desk. Um, you, <laughs> Staring at it. You've got a resource that you can go to. I have the marketing team to thank for that. Um, now you've got a resource you can go to and find the right supplier. Um, you know, if you're if you're in an acquisitive mood and you know you're looking to get into a certain segment, you have a ready-made shortlist of companies that are potential acquisition opportunities. So really, regardless of which um, which role or what, what role you play within the industry, um, I think the report plays a really important part. Um, and, 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 and the idea is, I think, the use of a graphic um, and, you know, making it as, as uh, you know, art, art with a capital A, uh, make, making it as artistic as possible, I think is helpful for that as well, um, because it's then easily digestible. Um, if yeah, if, if you need it for any of those reasons. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it yeah does a great job of, like I said, like illustrating the industry and and it, it's an asset too, right? For you know all types of companies that are they're looking for you know help in specific areas. Um, but at the very least, that will drive conversation. Uh, at least I recall the last year's report did. Uh, some people loved it. Some people had comments. But whatever conversation drove, you know, what was positive because it it, it definitely uh, uh, like was an impact uh, in the industry because people took notice of it. And and you know, as you said, uh, a lot of people have a lot of you know, some of the things that are not even the entire will, but like in, in their head or, or maybe written down on a piece of paper, but nobody has been able to, um, you know, put all the pieces together and actually, um, visualize it, like, 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 like you know, I, you put it together. Yeah. And no, I think the, the feedback is always really helpful. I can, um, I can guarantee that the first few bits of feedback are always, why haven't you included our company? Satisfying. Uh, yeah. Well, I was I was going to say that I think there's a room for data art in the wheel somewhere. Uh, 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 <laughs> I, I, I think I left to look. I, maybe we made it. Yeah, but that's that's you know I think that's like a, you know that's like an honor if you get it if you get on the yeah, wheel well, and you can say it's, it it's really useful as well. I think yeah. um, you know a lot of work goes into it as as you as you mentioned Russell, but it's always evolving. Um, it's it's grown year on year consistently um and i think people people you know providing that feedback and saying what about this company what about that company help to keep it up to date and relevant um but also it plays a really valuable role for you know people in those businesses as well to see themselves along their competitor set you know i was i was thinking and and um it's it's like the report i send i'll send it to people that are looking at the business, you know, I have a lot of peers from the media business that are looking at sports betting going, you know, why are you so interested in this? And, you know, and I look at it as like, look at, this is a real business and here it is. And here's all the intersections of technology, media, content. And to be able to send that to someone that's looking, obviously I have some venture friends that are looking at like, is this an area I should be looking at? It does give them a nice snapshot to say, oh, this is legit and this is growing. Because there's a lot of misconceptions, I think, of the business. And, and when you really look at again the technology behind it, I think this does a great job. Um, yeah. And the other thing I liked too is the look ahead. You know, we talked about last in the last report. You talked a little bit about Ladim. Where is it going? You know, can you talk about that a little bit? Like when we look at, 
you know, when are the ex the next states going to come on in the U.S. and then what's that impact going to be, or is there going to be a little pause? You know, are we ever going to see Florida flip or California flip? And then what about Latin? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I certainly don't want to be making predictions about uh, Florida or California, but um, yeah. I think it's yeah. As I mentioned at the start, the 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 U.S. has sort of gone on this roller coaster journey, and we're in a little bit of a, a down downturn at the moment in terms of the optimism around it. But I think it's certainly an over over correction, or in my view, anyway, my personal view. Um, we we've just come off the back of successful state launches in Ohio and Massachusetts. Um, it the 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 outlook for the rest of the year and and certainly into twenty twenty four is a bit unknown currently. Um, there's likely to be uh, a, a small number more, but certainly not any of the big states that are really going to move the dial um, from a US perspective. So it looks like it'll be more of a drawn out um, process in terms of that continued growth from a um, from a top line perspective. Certainly in terms of US handle um, internationally, it's really a, a case of yeah two contrasting views where you have increasingly more regulatory scrutiny in Europe and trying to find the way um, sort of through the the different dynamics within each each um, each country and then the flip side is you have you have LATAM which is you know growing significantly increasing growth just from a general media perspective but also when you overlay sports betting onto that as well um and and also uh, you know there are various asian markets as well where people are looking with interest given large significantly improving kind of economic um environments where if they were to regulate they they create a similar um opportunity i think to the one we've seen in the us over the last uh five years or so so um it's it's a constantly moving picture really and, and the key is just staying on top of it and making sure you've got got um real clarity on where the priorities are for you as a business and where you think you can sort of make the most of the opportunities yeah 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 and then we, we've definitely seen more attention to the latin american market um from uh you know some folks in, in our in our network who are you know focusing on on the uh, you know, Latin American uh, or, or I guess the, the Spanish speaking market in the U.S., which yeah. is kind of a to me it appears to be like initial step to kind of get into you know a Mexico or you know maybe even into, into South America at some point. But uh, yeah, it's like a stepping stone to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and you know kind of you know back you know to to the report. Um, you know, you, you've been kind of, you know, front and center with this, you know, research and analysis, you know, for, for several years now, you know, as, as you've met, you've mentioned throughout the, the conversation, um, and you know, you're, you yourself and your company is going to be very, very well known in the industry. Can, uh, can you talk a little bit about like, kind of, you know, what it took to, to kind of get there? Because again, um, uh, I don't want to keep repeating the same thing, but what you have produced is, is unique, right. in in, in terms of you know, uh, a view of the market. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about like what it took to get there? And that, you know, of course, don't uh, reveal all your, all your secrets, but, uh, and, and, you know, it definitely was a lot of effort to help, you know, from what it appears. Yeah, well, there's there's no secrets or there's no secret source. As, as I have mentioned <laughs> previously, we recognized it was something that was missing and would be valuable to everyone who, sees or such as the industry in some way um and after that it was a lot of hard work by various members of the team um so maybe that's that's the secret sauce so it's not so secret anymore um yeah pe people putting their heads together desktop research speaking to um various participants within the within the industry we also have had input from a a number of you know independent um betting and gaming experts as well so it helps you know we as a business touch lots of different parts of sports book operators and and have a very strong network on the ground so are, are able to 
speak to people on all different sides uh, of the industry. So that's that's sort of how how it's been pulled together. And as I mentioned, you know, pe- people when they see they're not on on the previous version will let us know, and therefore that helps to build it out. Um, we yeah. we continually speak to the experts um, within the industry as well to to get their counsel in terms of whether there are other segments that are missing or trends that we should cover as part of the as part of the report itself um, or businesses that that we've missed off as well so it's an ongoing an ongoing process and all we're trying to do is make sure that each um each version is more useful than the next uh, so hopefully everyone will find this uh, the third iteration of it valuable yeah yeah and uh, you know, at least from from my perspective, what was great is that, you know, a lot of people have their own commentary thoughts. You know, it's kind of a little bit of a wild, wild west out there in terms of, um, you know, some of the more prominent folks in the industry. But all of your research is backed up by data, um, which to me, uh, you know, looking at it, it brings a lot more confidence than hearing somebody's uh thoughts or, or guesses, you know, in terms of, you know, what's going to happen, where the industry is going, which states will go live. And, um, uh, you know, I do, I do appreciate your, um, you know, uh, commentary on, uh, you know, the market here because yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's hard, hard to tell. And, you know, we're not in kind of the, uh, uh, the guessing business, right. Or prediction business where, <laughs> you know, so it's all backed up by data and facts, which which makes it even more superb, at least in my eyes. So, thank you. Yeah, well, right, thank you. Well, it's it's um, as you say, it certainly makes it, or, or we believe it gives it more credibility. Um, if if it's yeah, grounded absolutely. in grounded in those facts, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Super. Um, any last thoughts, Kevin? I know you always have. I know this is here. great. <laughs> no, but what, my. my the most important thought is that people actually should read it and take a look at it. And and I actually say go back and look at the other reports too, because what I love to look is that wheel and look at how the industry has evolved. Um, you know, if you go back a couple of years and how the players are switching in and out. Um, and also the really section in the in the in the middle where you talked about kind of the growth in the in the industry by month and by year, and you could see how it's leveling out who the dominant players really are. And when, let's say, for example, Caesars was banging all their money in January, how their their growth, their their market share grew, but it kind of shrunk as it went down. So there's some little interesting things I encourage people to look at as far as looking at the trends. This has been great. Yeah. Good conversation. Well, thank you again for joining us again. Um, we'll look forward to having you back, um, you know, one next Thursday. With, with a jacket. The yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for the jacket at the post. <laughs> <laughs>